I, uh, I found this video uh, from Chinese state media, uh, Tea House, and uh, it's a must watch. And I, I listened to this, this guy's a wise man, ex-military, he's an American, speaking the truth about the Western view of China. And he quotes Xi Jinping, uh, that China learned about the world and the world still didn't learn about China. And note in this video how the money has always controlled the governments in the West. It's always been this way. And also why the West judges China by its own geopolitical misdeeds, by its own dark history. Watch, this is great. Recommended viewing. I think one thing that's kind of sad is that the Western misconceptions about China today are pretty similar to those of when I came in 88. It hasn't been a lot of change, um, but they're similar to what they were 100 years ago. That's why you know, when Xi Jinping was governor t 20 years ago in Fujian, he said that Chinese have come to know the world better, but the world still doesn't know China. For example, I was in Taiwan. I was in the military in Taiwan for two years. I really thought that China was the big threat to the world. But that's because of fake news is nothing new. In 1899, just before the 20th, 20th century began, in that year, Lord Beresford in England wrote a book called The Breakup of China. It was a catalog of all the Chinese provinces and cities and all the resources the West could get from it. I mean, they're really talking about taking China to pieces. And I get this, you get this. And in the same year, two other books they published was China, The Yellow Peril, and China at War with the World. They're picturing China as the great threat to the world, which is ironic because they were tearing China to pieces, forcing opium on China. Chinese have never gone to a distant country to take over, and yet they were saying China was the threat. It was pretty ironic, but China was a threat to the West because they thought China was finally going to stand up and stop the easy money. That was the fake news then, and today is the same thing. They, you know, they, they still are parade, it's just like in the 70s when I was in Taiwan, the 80s when I first came, and today they're saying China is a threat to the world. China's destroying the world order. Well, what's a world order built on? I mean, it wasn't necessarily a good order anyway. <laughs> and uh, so the media is very powerful. Or when the Second Opium War, the media was used even back then. The British leaders, the parliament, the entire British parliament unanimously opposed the Second Opium War. So the prime minister just dissolved parliament and the media said, we're going to war against China because of the honor of the queen. They did something bad and people believed it. And today people believe it. It's not much change in really 180 years. So that's why I think it's so important that we really work, not just government promotion, but that a lot of people get involved in telling China's story to help foreigners see what is the truth here. That's why I started writing about China. I thought if I write about China, if I write my family and friends, as soon as I got to China, I saw China is not at all like what the media portrayed it. So I immediately started writing letters and articles and things to show China, but I thought if I really start writing about China, they'll see that as propaganda. So I wrote about Chinese and how Chinese lived and what their dreams were and how their lives were changing. And through that, try to change people's opinion. Because if you understand Chinese, then you understand China. And my father was the hardest sell. And he was in the military 18 years, in Asia 11 years fighting communist China. <laughs> so he wasn't real happy I came here. But the year he died, a few months before he died, the last time I saw him, he said he finally understood why I came here and stayed here, and he's proud that I did it. And that was about if my father's can change. So I think the most important thing China will do, besides telling more materials about China, is just its actions in the world. I mean, the world really fears China. But I understand why they fear China, because, I mean, look at history. 500 and something years, how are the Western countries I tell my students that the Chinese are the best business people in history because throughout history, Chinese have done real business. They've never had Beijing military navy behind them. Chinese in China and Southeast Asia, they just did real business, whereas for 500 years, Western businessmen have always had the military and the governments behind them. So that's how the West has done things for over 500 years, and I don't think they can really understand that Chinese throughout history have not done